This story caught my eye early this month. <laughs> it's really a great story. It told of uh, blackberry addicts getting a crack at freedom if they checked into a certain Chicago hotel where the manager offered to put these devices under lock and key <laughs> for guests who wanted a break. He said he would take personal charge of these blackberries or related devices so guests could surrender them in his office and have them locked up until their return is requested, no additional charge. <laughs> so this, of course, is an enormous compliment to our next speaker, Mike Lazaridis. Michael, come on up here who by now is a legend in Canada, having launched one of the great modern Canadian business success stories. A uh, column recently in the Globe and Mail by Jeffrey Simpson named uh, the guys who run Air Canada as possibly the most hated people in the country. And I think Mike and his partners at RIM are among the most beloved in Canada. Thank you, Moses. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I must admit that I must have read old documentation about Idea City because I was told that I wasn't to bring any prepared documentation or any PowerPoint presentations or any multimedia extravaganzas. I was told to just come here unprepared and speak to you. Um, now, that's kind of difficult. For that last part was, un was difficult for me because what I'm going to talk about is something I've been talking about for a long time. But What's interesting is to see all this amazing technology that's being shown to you today. And the sense of awe that we get when we see technology and we see the work of researchers and engineers of the highest caliber, what we call excellence. Now, I've also been watching what's happening in Canada. We've, you know, you saw the headline today, you know, the most prosperous year in 50 years. We talk about Canada having you know, this, this new age that's coming here in terms of prosperity. And when I hear all these things, I, I'm concerned because I'm not hearing enough of a national debate on the foundations that got us here. I don't hear enough of a, of a debate on what is commercialization, what is technology, what's the difference between technology and basic research? How do we commercialize basic research or research from our universities. And what I do hear is wrong. What I do see printed in magazines or in, in newspapers or in government documents, what I realize is that a large portion of that is incorrect. It's misguided. And what I was hoping I get a chance today is to really start that national debate in earnest here at IDS, Idea City. Now, I think it's important that, that we all get a sense of what's happened over the last 100 years. In fact, the best way I can bring this together is, let's take a look at what it would be like if someone from 25 years ago went in today's standard hotel washroom. And they walked in, and the first thing they realized, they don't know how to operate anything. <laughs> there are no knobs. Paper towels just inject themselves automatically. In fact, the soap dispenser seems to be out of sync. You go to get some soap, you pull away, and it squirts. And then, <laughs> right? Ever notice that? The engineers haven't quite got that right. But what's important was that that technology was based on a basic physics discovery that happened 100 years ago by a bunch of researchers that really were just curiosity-driven. They had no idea what their research was going to unveil to the public decades later. And it was all based on you know, solid state physics and the infrared detectors that are inside all that apparatus you see now. If we go back in time and we pluck one of those people from there and we put them in this room and they watch what happened today, it would be magic to them. I mean, look at these projectors we take for granted. High definition audio. Just everything that happens today, we take it for granted. And that, that's probably the biggest risk that Canada has, Canada faces going forward, is that we take all this incredible progress for granted. Because we have an opportunity to put Canada into hyperdrive. With all this financial growth that we have, all this 
financial um, success that's coming, that's here today. We have an opportunity to take that and invest it in those things that are going to propel Canada to the future, that are going to put us in a position where we can actually compete. So one of the things I want to talk about is this whole idea of commercialization. You see, everyone talks about we need to get our investments back. We've been putting all this money into research and development. In fact, we've had eight enlightened years. We've had the Canada Research Chairs, the Millennium Scholarships. We've been funding money into our granting councils. We've been funding indirect costs into our universities. These are all great things. We've had eight years of enlightened investment in the country. And sometimes we hear, well, what's it done for us? What has been the benefit? What's, what's the return on investment? Well, I asked a group of, of uh, business leaders and, and bureaucrats and politicians in Ottawa a couple years ago that very question. And they, the answers surprised me because they missed the one most important answer. The most important effect was that at that time we had $8 billion surplus. And this year we're going to record another record surplus because the Canadian economy is booming. And it's not just because of oil and it's not just because of commodities. Where, where do we see the return on investment? They're going to talk about why should we put all this money into research, basic research, our universities, our labs, our hospitals. Why should we put all that money in there? The irony is we're not putting that much money in them. If you look at the total dollars that we're spending, if you look at the increments in the granting councils, they're tiny. And yet, think of the benefits. Now, let me, let me try and sort of turn it on its head, because we don't have a lot of time to discuss this, but I just want to get that debate started. We don't go in to universities and find all these Rembrandts in the attic and then commercialize them directly. It's not the way it works. That's the way that everyone wants to lead you to believe that that's how commercialization and scientific discovery work. It doesn't work like that at all. In fact, the greatest discoveries were the ones that really weren't being directed by anything but the researcher's curiosity, trying to solve the basics of nature, trying to figure out how things work and why they work that way, and can they work better. If we take a look how the system works, it's not about giving money to researchers and then them going out and licensing technology to companies. In fact, the amount of return on investment that we get from universities for direct spin-off and licensing this is what everyone leads you to believe. They say, well, that's where we get all our return on investment. The direct licensing revenue, spin-off revenue, is less than 5% of the amount of money we invest every year into university education and research. Less than 5%. That's a terrible ROI. And in fact, anyone using those numbers could justify pulling back money out of the research and engineering and, and, um, and education and medical study that's a good reason to pull money out because the return on investment, it's bad. I mean, would you, would you keep funding your, um, your investment counselor or your, your mutual fund if you got a 5% return on investment out of all the money you put in? Turns out that that's not where we get our return on investment. The return on investment happens every year. In fact, we just finished up graduating 4,001 students from the University of Waterloo. It's amazing because I get a chance to, to meet them and I hear their life story in 15 seconds or less. And every one of them is excited because they know they've gone through something special, a special experience, something that's gotten them excited, something that has taught them something. They've realized their true potential and where they can go with it and they've got the tools and they've been inspired. And they're going out into the workforce. They're going into social systems, into government, into the arts, into engineering into, into um, media. They're going out there because they've been taught and inspired and trained. That is the end result. That is the leaven that builds our economy. Every, every year, in fact, we graduate around 4,000 students in spring, and then we graduate about 1,800 students again in fall. And this happens every year. It's a pipeline. It's a